Cameron McIntosh. It's an absolute pleasure and honour to have you here in Sydney again. It's very nice to be back. Well, it's Les Miserables. It's the musical, absolute stunning movie. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I, I'm both delighted and re- relieved that, uh, you know, the audience is enjoying it so much, particularly the people who love the, the stage show, you know, because, um, you know, f- for me, it was we wouldn't be making this movie if it wasn't for the audiences over the last 27 years embracing the show. And the fact that they love the movie as much as they like the show is, a, you know, is fantastic. There's a lot of history involved that goes obviously back through the stage production and where it originated from. And the seed was sown with Alain Bublé when he saw the, it was the Oliver production and then he saw the little... The Artful uh, Dodger. The Artful Dodger, yeah. that's right. Well, I didn't know about this until the show had been running a few years, but in 1978, I, I just produced um, a revival of Oliver and um, Alain who lives in Paris, you know, where they don't have musicals. He'd only seen Oliver on the screen, so he wanted to see it on stage. Um, and so he came to see it, and as I say, as the, as the Artful Dodger was singing Consider Yourself, suddenly Gavroche popped into his brain and all the other characters of Les Miserables sort of he percolated. And at the end of the show, he rang Claude Michel Schoenberg, his partner, in Paris and said, I've found the subject of our next musical. And then they both came and saw it again. and. Uh, They started work on the concept album and uh, they put it on in 1980, but I didn't know anything about this. And then two years later, after I'd just produced Cat, somebody brought the concept album to me. I listened to it and I was knocked out and I went to meet Alain and Claude Michel in Paris. And that was the start of, you know, A, great friendship and B, of us reinventing the, the whole show for when we did it in London. What do you think is the secret power of success of Les Miserables? I think it's two things. I mean, one, of course, Victor Hugo wrote one of the greatest social novels of all time. But as he wrote to his publisher 150 years ago, he didn't write a French, just a French story for the French. It was an Italian story for the Italians, an American story for the Americans. He wrote it for the world. And indeed, it became a bestseller around the world. And his observation of the characters are, are completely timeless. Um, The story is as contemporary today uh, with the abyss between the haves and the have not as large as it's ever been in history. Um, Every every audience, whether even in high school where they perform the show brilliantly or on on the West End or Broadway stage, recognizes, you know, the characters, um, Eponine, Javert, the Tenardiers, you know, mankind never learns from itself, you know, Mm. they exist everywhere in every society and in every language. So every country in every language in the world recognises the characters and and responds to them. I mean, it's fascinating because I would never have thought that kids of eight, nine and ten would be able to grasp such a serious story, but they do and sometimes they grasp the rights and wrongs of the story quicker than adults. At what point did you then decide that it was time to engage working title films and, and turn it into a movie? Well, originally I was going to make a movie 25 years ago after the Broadway really? show opened and really? just before it opened in or just after it opened in Sydney. Right. It was about that time and lots of people, because it was a big hit there, said, would I like to do a movie? And I said, well, if I find a director, because, you know, unless we have a director, we can't make a movie. Mm. And... They said, well, who would you like? And at that point, I said Alan Parker would be somebody who I I hugely admired to talk to. And Alan wanted to do it, Um, so I did a deal. Um, But I put one scripture that I said, I'd like the show to hope the show will run three or four years. And so we we can't make a film for at least five years. Mm. And during that time, Alan came to me and said, look, my mind's gone into other things. I'm afraid I'm going to withdraw. And though I spoke to a couple of other directors. You know, I I quite understood Alan's point. Um, Nothing happened then. And then in ensuing years, um, uh, you know, I get the odd call saying, would people like, is it, were the rights still available? I went, yes, and then nothing would happen. And then about three years ago, um, Eric Fellner, who who runs Working Title, Mm -hmm. my managing director, Nick Allett, is one of Eric's best friends. And Nick said to me, you know, you really go and should go and see Eric. I think they are interested in right. doing a musical. Mm. And so I went to see him, and indeed they were interested in doing Les Mis. And um, they introduced me to several 
uh, screen potential screenplay writers and mm -hmm. Bill Nicholson I met and I really liked him and so he started he wrote the screenplay and you know uh, all, and started adding the things from the novel that we would need to make a film as opposed to the stage show and we worked on the score and everything and one day Tom Hooper popped in to see Bill because they were working on another project mm -hmm. and said what are you working on and Bill said oh, I'm working on Les Miserables script he said really oh, I've never <laughs> seen that and he said isn't it surprising it's not been made into a movie mm -hmm. and uh, he hired himself off to see the show in the West End and was really moved by it mm -hmm. and rang um, Eric Fellner and said look I would be interested but at that point there was no he he hardly made any movies and mm. King's Speech hadn't come out it was still going around the festivals I met up with him and you know I was really uh, really taken by both his vision for how he would film it and uh, also the fact that he like I did felt it was really really important that we record it live so that it had an immediacy to it and at that point, you know, I, I rang Alan and Claude Michel and I said, look, I know I'd only seen one film of Tom's, Damned United. Mm. Uh, um, and then I, I did subsequently go and see John Adams, um, which he'd done for television. And I went, I, I think this guy would be absolutely terrific. And then, of course, the mm. King's Speech became the King's Speech. The King's Speech. <laughs> uh, and he still wanted to do Les Mis, uh, thank God. Um, and that was the start of it. So it seems to be somehow they were meant to be in this movie. You've got Hugh Jackman, of course, Russell Crowe and Hathaway, and they've all got a little bit of a history as to how they ended up auditioning. And did they mind actually having to audition? Yeah, nobody, mm. nobody minded. I mean, I, you know, I mean, of course, when I first raised it with Eric and, and Tom, I went, I'm sure you're going to find with Hugh, he will just expect that. Mm. Hugh comes from the musical theatre. He started mm. here, you know, in Sunset Boulevard and Beauty and the Beast, and then I did Oklahoma with him in London. And I'd also seen Russell when he'd just left drama school here. And I'd saw him, in, he did musicals when he first started. I said, I don't think there's going to be any problem. And there never was. And what was interesting with this cast, just like Tom, they wanted to be, to do Les Miserables. Mm. They, you know, they all put themselves through it. Mm. Um, and, you know, everybody wanted to be in Les Miserables. It's just one of those pieces that attracts actors who can sing. Mm. And, and of course... The, the miraculous thing is that when, um, you know, most of these people either weren't born or were at school when, yeah, exactly. when the show opened. And mm. thank God that at the, the timing is such that they're now the right age to play it. Mm. And so the majority of people are used to be playing, um, you know, used to actually acting through singing. Right. Telling a story through music is what they do. Right. You've got a whole... Sorry, time's up. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, oh. oh. time's up for what? Oh. Why was that? Why is that? Oh, sorry. Just the eight minutes is gone. Oh, has oh, it already? Two more no. really good questions. Good. good. <laughs> so, is that all right? Is, right? That's all right. You sure? <laughs> is that okay? Sorry. Um, I'm just going to, because I don't want to get us into it. Um, Grant Goldman reminded me this morning when Normie Rowe yes. played Hugh Jackman's role. And the people were uh, blown away with Normie Rowe playing the role of Jean Valjean in Les Miserables here in Sydney. So they are just going to be so blown away when they see Hugh Jackman. He's unbelievable. Well, you know, to have Hugh and Russell, you know, who are absolutely born to play these two roles, mm. uh, you know, I've always found with my musicals that you get the best of the best out of Australia mm. and this too is going to take this to the world, you know. I mean, it, they, we're very lucky that both of mm. these guys are alive at this time to, to do Absolutely. This film. And you know, you've got a whole untapped market that are about to discover Les Miserables. You've got the young university students, namely my son, who's been asking me so many questions because a lot of it re resonates with this movement at the moment with Occupy Wall Street, Occupy London, Occupy Sydney. And then you've got when they when these young kids see this movie, they are just going to become so much more passionate. The humanity, the, the message is just Brilliant, absolutely stunning. Well, I'm thrilled, and hopefully later next year that they'll all come on audition for when I bring the 25th anniversary back really? to Australia in 2014. Oh, excellent. So I shall be casting soon. That's brilliant. Oh, congratulations again on an much. absolutely stunning movie. An absolute honour to have spoken to you Thank today. You. Thank you.
Thank you, guys. Worth it, that last question. Good. Thank you. Was that worth it? Perfect. <laughs> Who am I?